Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Jubal Functions. If you recognize the intro tune, uh, that means you probably played my uh, latest uh, retro game. Uh, I say latest, but it's actually my first retro game. Uh, I made this a couple of weeks ago, it's called uh, Azure Functions The Game. Uh, it's a puzzle game with seven levels, and you have to consume lots of other sprites, being the Azure Functions uh, logo, in order to open the door uh, and go to the next level. Um, if you like puzzle games, um, I definitely uh, would like to uh, have you try it and uh, let me know what you think of it. Go to this website and then you can play the game uh, online uh, for free. So let's get back to business and talk about the Dribble Functions API. Um, again, we're talking about the Dribble orchestration client. Uh, so this is part five where, where, where we discuss the client API. And this is probably going to be uh, the last episode uh, for this. Um, we are going to talk about the uh, eventing functionality because with an orchestration client we can raise events uh, and an orchestrator instance can um, uh, wait for these events and respond to it. So these are the methods to, uh, to raise events. So as you can see we can raise an event and we need to provide an instance ID. So that's the instance ID of the orchestrator who will respond to it. Uh, we can provide an event name because um, we need to wait for an event in your orchestrator based on a name. So matching is done also on a name basis. And we, and we can provide some event data. Uh, the other more elaborate way, um, you then also need to specify a task hub name and a, a connection string name. So this means you can actually raise an event to uh, a function app which uses a different uh, task hub name and, and storage name. So this makes it need more uh, more flexible. Um, we need to look at the bigger picture though, because um, just explaining and showing things about raising events without actually the handling and waiting for events, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's take a step back and let's talk about the human interaction uh, pattern, also called external events in the, uh, the documentation. Um, and it's best described by going uh, through uh, this use case of a, uh, an approval workflow. So let's say you have a request, the square box here, uh, that comes into uh, an orchestrator. Uh, but then we need to make a decision if this uh, request is uh, approved or if it's uh, denied. Um, so how will this be done? Well, we, in an orchestrator, we can actually wait for an event and then the event data can then be used uh, as logic in order to uh, determine if we go through or if it will be denied. So um, the, uh, the triangle here uh, is actually uh, the orchestrator and uh, the, the checkboxes here are then uh, different activities. Um, and the little figure here with this arrow is actually the event that will be raised. So let's look uh, in the Visual Studio how this uh, looks uh, in, uh, in code. So here we are in uh, Visual Studio in my uh, Drupal Functions demo project. And in this section, um, there are, uh, there's a client, which I'm showing here now. And th that client is used to actually raise the event. So in this case, we are looking at an HTTP trigger. And if you do a post to the approval slash event name slash instance ID uh, route, um, then we read the approval from the, um, uh, from the request. And then we do the raise event async methods as we saw before. And then we pass in the instance ID of the orchestrator. Uh, we pass in the event name and the actual approval object. All right, but what happens then at the side which needs to accept or which can accept the event? So that's in an orchestrator. And let's look at uh, this one. So this is the single approval orchestrator. There we can see uh, that orchestrator uh, retrieves something from the context, an input message. Uh, and then we see that it will wait for an external event. And that external event has a certain type, of type of approval. And we are also specifying an event name. So this orchestrator uh, will not continue until it has received an event of type approval and matches a certain event name. So let's now uh, try this in, uh, in code. 
let me actually put a, uh, a breakpoint here. Um, and we will trigger this um, orchestrator. Um, and then we should actually hit this breakpoint because um, it will not continue until we have sent this approval event. So my function app is already running. So let's move over to, uh, to VS Code to uh, start this orchestrator and then to raise an event uh, to see if it continues. So here we are in, uh, in VS Code. Um, I'm using the, uh, the REST client in VS Code to, uh, to make all my requests. So I'm gonna uh, start my single approval orchestrator and I'm passing in a, uh, an object, which is an, a message object that has a sender and a content property. So let's do the request. So now we have uh, started the um, single approval orchestrator. And this has an ID that starts with uh, CB8. So, and first, um, well, we, I, I don't see any, any breakpoint yet because uh, that, that means we, we didn't hit this part yet. So now it's actually waiting here uh, in the uh, wait for external event part. So now actually let's retrieve the status of that orchestrator because the status should be saying that it's running yeah, because it's, it's actually waiting, but uh, the runtime status is then running. And indeed, uh, instance ID CV8 and it's running. So now let's actually raise the event. So that is done through the um, HTTP trigger uh, client function I showed earlier. So we're going to the approval slash event name slash instance ID. So event name is approve event and the instance ID is uh, what I extracted earlier from the orchestrator. Um, so this is my approval uh, object here. It's, uh, it has a name, approver, and the, the result of the approval. In this case, we are going to approve it, so it's true. So let's uh, make that request. So this get, and now we see, oh, uh, you don't see it yet because we are in Visual Studio, but now we can see that the breakpoint is, um, is, is triggered. So now we have actually received and we're going to call um, the activity and the activity is actually the uh, put on approved message queue activity because that, that's been selected uh, in this part. So we are going to um, call the activity um, and then the orchestrator will go to sleep and then it actually will come back to this uh, spot uh, again. Uh, so let's uh, continue this. All right. Uh, and now it, uh, it comes back. And so now the result is there and then it will continue and set the, the, the custom status. And now the orchestration is completed. Uh, so if we go back to, uh, to VS Code, uh, we can actually uh, query the result of this orchestration. So we actually uh, do a get request again to get the status. So instead of running, it should be a, a completed status now. And indeed the runtime status is now completed. And you can also see that we've set this custom status uh, property um, with the name of the uh, queue that we uh, expected. All right, uh, let's uh, get back to our slides for a second. So that's for, uh, for a single approval still, um, but what in a situation uh, that the person who needs to approve it um, is not there and maybe the person is on holiday or is, is ill or whatever. So what, what needs to happen then? Um, so, and because in this case, the orchestrator will be in a running state uh, and it will not uh, complete. Uh, so it will keep waiting and waiting forever. So that's not a good situation to be in. Uh, but what you can do then is you can actually uh, try a different uh, overload and method for the wait for external event. Uh, so we still um, supply the event name, but we can also supply a time span. Uh, so in this case, I specified a very short time span, but let's say we want to wait uh, for 24 hours. So from hours, I want to wait 24 hours uh, for that event. Uh, and if that event didn't happen within the 24 hours, then we are going to provide a default value for uh, our approval. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to uh, have a, um, a default uh, approval 
And the default of the approval is actually false. So this is a much more uh, robust way uh, to wait for external events uh, because yeah, uh, events might happen or they might not. So in case they're not happening, we still have a, a, a fallback value to, uh, to use. So um, I want to demo this, but I'm not gonna wait for 24 hours. So that's why it was uh, set to, uh, to 10 seconds. So let's uh, set it back to seconds and let's, uh, let's do that uh, demo. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're going to start this um, uh, orchestrator and we are not going to send an event. Okay? So in that case, um, after 10 seconds, it should actually use uh, the, the default value, so false. So then we expect um, uh, the put on queue activity to be the put on the denied messages queue activity. Um, so then it should automatically uh, continue with this one. I'm not going to put the breakpoint there because we can uh, see the response when we retrieve the status. So the, this function app is still running. So let's um, get back to VS Code and actually trigger it. All right. So we, we now are going to start a different orchestrator because that has the um, wait for external event with a timeout. So let's um, close this one and let's start this one. So this orchestrator is now uh, uh, started. So we now have an instance for E36. Uh, so when, 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 maybe when we're quick. Yeah, so now we can see it's still running because we're still within those uh, 10 seconds. Uh, but if I uh, do it again, it's probably, yeah, now you see it's completed uh, because it, the 10 seconds has uh, elapsed. So it uh, went back to the default value and it will uh, be denied. So our message is now put on the put on the denied message queue activity. So that, uh, that works as expected. Um, back to our slides for a bit. So that's with a uh, single approval. Uh, still a, a fairly straightforward case, um, but we can also extend this situation when you have uh, multiple approvals. So let's say in this case we have two approvals, and we need uh, and we want to wait uh, in, in the orchestration until both of them have has approved. Uh, so let's uh, switch back to Visual Studio again. Uh, so in this we are going to another orchestrator. The multiple approval orchestrator. Uh, again, we extract our message from uh, the context. Uh, again, we are defining a, um, a timeout. Uh, we also have a default approval again. Uh, and in this case, we uh, specify two um, approval tasks, yeah, or actually the, the, the wait for external event task. So the first one is for uh, approve event one. Yeah, so they're now individual uh, event names. We have approve event uh, one and we have approve event two. Uh, and we're both capturing the result in a tasks task. And uh, what we do is the same as when we do uh, uh, the fan out fan in uh, pattern. We are going to do an await uh, task when all and we are passing in both those tasks and we'll, we'll, we won't continue until we have the response of both those tasks. Uh, so then we have the result of both approvals. And in this case, if you want to uh, continue uh, when both of them are, uh, are uh, approved, uh, so then we define the result when we check we want to uh, have the is approved true for both of them. Uh, and that decides if we, uh, which queue uh, we, uh, we use. All right, so let's uh, do this. From, from VS Code. So now we're doing the multiple approvals uh, one. So first we're going to start the orchestrator, which will then uh, be in a running uh, mode because it's, it will be waiting. So uh, 410. Uh, so we can check if it's uh, actually uh, running. Yes, it will be running. And the default uh, uh, time span for this to wait was now 24 hours, so it, it won't uh, we won't trigger that. So now let's raise uh, an event. So this is the first event from approver one and we will approve it. So let's do that. Okay, so that is sent to the, uh, to the orchestrator. Uh, let's actually check if it's still running. It should be because it only 
accepted uh, one and we're actually waiting for two so indeed it's still running and now let's trigger the other event so it's a different event name and uh, well let's also change the name so now we're doing the second one okay so that's also raised so now we should expect that the orchestrator will actually continue and uh, so the orchestrator will be uh, completed okay it hasn't yet but i'm pretty sure it will be very soon yes now it's completed and we can see that uh, the actual activity that was called finally was put on approved uh, messages queue activity because both of the approvers uh, said uh, it was okay so that uh, that all works um let's briefly get uh, get back um as you can see, it's quite straightforward to use these eventing um, possibilities within uh, within Drupal functions. Um, I haven't seen it used in uh, in, uh, in in the wild a lot, uh, but I think it's definitely uh, valuable. Um, let me know if you have any questions more about the Drupal orchestrations uh, client. Um, I think I've covered quite a lot of this API now, and uh, I think it's nice if we uh, cover some uh, some new parts of, uh, of Drupal functions in the in the next videos. Um, so yeah, please uh, like and subscribe to my uh, to my channel. Uh, feel free to contact me through uh, through Twitter at uh, Mark Duiker. And if you want to keep uh, up to date with all the changes related to Azure Functions, then please uh, also follow uh, AZFunk updates on Twitter. Until next time.